get it. Well, it's a Kai fans certainly have a lot to be happy about at the moment, so I suspect that those cheers are just going to get louder and louder if they can continue to win in this series. God forbid if they win with a 4-0. Always a pretty safe bet. Bunch of Kai fans will be in full voice today and at a potential grand final that for now they're setting up for. Jae Hong makes the jump. Not the sort of clutch play that he's going to be scrutinized for at the end, but still notable. He will be jumping on the Ana this particular map. Great sight lines on Hanamura defense for the Ana. The attack from Afrika Freaks Blue will be interesting to track. Dong Hyun might actually be flexing over onto the Tracer. It could just be on Diva duty, but Dong Hyun's second most played has been Tracer, 20% of his game time this season. They ran triple DPS on a couple of maps, Numbani in particular, found a lot of value on it on point A in Numbani. See what they are gonna line up with on this side. And tra there's no main Tracer player on a Freak of Freaks, but they do share it around. Arhan playing it in the first map. It will be Dong Hyun opening up on Tracer on Hanamura attacks, the triple DPS is actually being run. A rare occurrence these days. See how they fare, have to rely solely on Mono, and he's gonna be the first one that goes down off screen as Guido finds the kill. Dong Yan is getting ready to join in with the rest of the squad, pinching in from above for a target. Can't quite find anything, and that's just gonna be the stop on the first push there at Freaka Freaks Blue. Losing out on that tank just makes them that much squishier, and they'll trade one back as Eska does go down. Recry finds that kill. Eska did overextend and will take a while to get back in position, so there will be a momentary 6v5 advantage to the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. Jayhawk pushing right up into their faces, just dropping down that Biotic Grenade, gets the heal deny in onto Mono, they take him down. Zimbo will get popped out of the back, and Jayhawk dies. Toby dying as well, both supports now down on the side of Lunatic High. They'll lose out on Nagito, and this is going to be a massive opening here for a Freak of Freaks Blue, so a bit too overconfident perhaps from Lunatic High to play up towards the gate. And that should just be the cap coming through. A couple minutes delayed for Freak of Freaks. Yeah, very overzealous from Lunatic High pushing out after Eska went down. And from there, it was the one by one. All the bowling pins did fall down. And Freak of Freaks Blue pick up on their second attack after being wiped at the start. Now poking forward. Arhan will have Dragon Blade available for this ult. The defensive ults from once on Lunatic High are not available. Toby only halfway to the sound barrier. Won't have a sound barrier to answer the Dragon Blade. Try poking out from the high ground, trying to build up that attack visor so you can maintain this position, try to clear out the point. Really being threatened on that left flank yet, but just still getting spammed out, has to keep dodging back and forth to get the heals. Arhan dash has a heal deny on him. Does have the heal deny coming through, but he's not going to be taken out. In fact, he's getting healed back up towards full. Pop Zumba out of that mech. Can't quite get the kill onto her yet. Nice deflect on the biotic grenade. Not going to find a heal deny onto anybody, and actually will go ahead and have to peel back. And several members die off screen. Lucid going to be one of them. So hold it on the push, but they do build up for some of these crucial ultimates. You see double support available. Tac Pfizer is there, and now Mono has the primal rage. Sound barrier being inched to forward for Lunatic High, and don't have to respect the Dragon Blade for a good while here. Lunatic High able to set up state defense, get Eska in strong position. No adjustments made from the side of Freak of Freaks Blues. Arhan takes the Helix Rocket to the face, will just be healed up. Go back off that one in the meantime, Recry using the attack visor on that high ground. And does drop down, finds Miro. One of the tanks being taken out here. Zumba gonna get popped out of the back as well. This could be a big take here, a big opportunity for Freak of Freaks Blue. If they can stay alive, Toby's gonna go down. The Primal Rage comes up with the kill. Jay Hong following suit, both supports. Now dead, double tick already here for Freak of Freaks. Eska pushes back forward, drops down the field. Transcendence, Transcendence answer. is there to answer. As you say, Miro has to jump in onto the point, but he's going dangerously low, will be taken out in the end. And that's just gonna be the cap. Five minutes, six seconds left on the clock. A Freak of Freaks blue. They fire back after losing two maps. Yeah, really huge time bank. After the first initial kills go went the way of Lunatic High. It looked like they'd be fine, but Eska being caught at the front and then basically everyone trickling in, allowed a Freak of Freaks Blue to jump in, get the kills. Eska couldn't even come back from the respawn. And it wasn't quite an initial snowball capture, but close to it from a Freak of Freaks Blue. To support ultimates meant there was no staying power for Lunatic High on the point. Tanks dying first in this new meta almost always leads to a significant skirmish and team fight victory. Now Lunatic High have a pretty big a target on their heads because they need to make a very fast claim of this point. Yeah, need to get point A, hopefully on the first push for their sake. 
to have that time bank built up to try to match, if not exceed, a Freak Freaks Blue. Even a couple minutes left on the clock, not too bad, but then there's just that much more stress when it comes down to that final defense that they have to put on in the overtime rounds. But for now, Freaky Freaks Blue going to be playing standard yet again. Arhan still operating on this Genji Recry on the Soldier. Not really making any changes. Not seeing the Torbjorn that we sometimes see on point A defense. Well, I'm better off to the Torbjorn display on Eichenwald. Not going to be messing around. It's probably enough to dissuade it, yeah. Exactly. I think that might be a thing of the past for this series at least. We will be visiting Assault again in just two maps time. If we go to a map five, that is the adjustment in the best of seven. No Lucid Ana on defense. If you were watching from the start, you'll know that many of his famous sleep dart plays, just like Jae Hong, very respected hitting that ability, but let's we'll be settling on the Zenyatta on defense on point A. Yeah, Jae Hong yet again. Moving forward with the Zenyatta by the look of things as we see that last second swap, but seems like he will just be sticking in with the selection. Mir Miracomps on both sides. In Lunatic High and a Freak of Freaks Blue. Outside of the Tracer and the Genji, gonna be the only thing, but operate similarly, similarly, trying to get to that back line, disrupting dealers. So, same basic function here for these squads. Lunatic High gonna be wrapping around the right side, up over onto the high ground. You find Arhan. They wanna contest an honor if she's forward. there, but we know there is no honor. You know, finding it. Nice and backside shot in on Arhan as he goes low, but still has those Orbs of Harmony to keep it topped off. Now, Guido firing away into the Winston, forced off on the recall, does go back, keeps himself topped up for the moment. Goes forward, finds Recry as well. He's in a very dangerous position, but from the side flank, just finds Mono. They take him out. Recry gonna go down as Miro leaps forward. And this is gonna be the stopping sweep here for Lutzikai, just pushing in, looking for that first cap on the first push. And it seems like they're gonna be able to do it. Just the supports left here. Mono has respawn. He can try to run back in. The second tick is getting ready to come through. He would be by himself, only trying to get a little bit of time here for his team. Doesn't even want to try it. So we'll just have another very swift cap. Noted the fact that it was the unique pick of the Tracer over the Genji. And it, you can see why it fits this meta so strongly, because taking down the front line, the tank so often absorbing left click after left, left click from a Tracer leads to a pulse bomb, leads to that man advantage. And when you take down Winston, so often does everything else come falling apart for the side. A Freak of Freaks blew that time on point B already. As you can see, time bank. Necessarily working too well for Lunatic High. Compared to a Freak of Freaks Blue, only a minute 30. Play with, they want to equal. Yeah, we need to try to snowball it just as quickly as uh, a Freak of Freaks were able to do. Just doesn't seem like the easiest task. Transcendence is available there from Lucid, as well as the Dragon Blade. Shay Hong can go ahead and try to answer that with his own Transcendence. We do hear that Blade get dragged out here by Arhan. For some hits, not going to find anything yet. Gonna be Esco with attack visor, does take out the Genji, leaping onto the high ground, comes Mono. Pops the primal range, leaps over to the side, now gonna try to get the kill in on the soldier 76. Has a pin right into the wall, will be able to do so. Picking up the double kill as Jaehong goes down. It seems like Ludicai will be halted for the moment. Yeah, Jaehong invested his transcendence just to buy space for Esco to use attack visor. No value from it, much more of a solid Winston play for Mono, dealing with both of that duo. Spot ultimate down. Mira may not have, Mono might not have the primal rage, but very clean stuff from Mono after a down two maps for him. Well, already encroaching on the time. That a Freak Freaks Blue were able to finish at. So it seems like Ludotakai not quite going to be able to match. We'll be operating with less of a time bank if they can complete the second point. Ido coming in, throws out that pulse bomb, not going to find the stick, and Mono stays safe. We'll be able to leap back into the point, get healed back up. Just feed that much more ult percentage over to the likes of Lucid. That's going to get again up onto the high ground. Miro going in very far forward. Left hand corner can't quite get many hits in. Goes in, no health back available for him. And Mono is trying to match him out. Trying to zap him down. He doesn't quite make it onto the high ground. Has a minor health back to get him healed back up a little bit. Esco has been the not losing anybody. It's been a dry push so far. Esco trying to farm up the attack visor that he used just a moment ago in the previous engagement. So far, so good. Freak of Freaks Blue not interested in contesting the high ground. No drop down. So Alt Bar is starting to fall on both sides. Esco so low. Send a couple people up here to the top side. It's going to be Amano coming up with the first kill onto Esco before he can even use the attack visor. Now the trade set is down from Jae Hong as they drop down onto the low ground. But the sound barrier is there from a Freak of Freaks Blue trying to keep everybody topped off. And it is paying off very well. First tick. 
Not even going to come through here for Lunatic High. And Jay Hong will have a very big stagger on that Zenyatta. Four minutes on the clock, already a minute down under a Freak of Freaks. Yeah, half second too late there, Jay Hong on the transcends. Not usually a criticism we would lay at his feet, but. Eska dying first, no heal denied, just the lack of heals coming through from the Transcendents meant that the whole comp fell apart. And these Transcendents will be down, but everything else available on the side of Lunatic High. Mano used the Primal Rage, and that's the only big difference in economy between the two teams. And attack Lizer is there for Recry. Several hits in on Nagito, almost goes down now. Miro leaping forward. Tries to get rid of the supports, can't quite find it. The sound barrier will be used out here by Toby. Are on with the Dragon Blade. Will get taken down. Eska with the attack Pfizer. Finishes him off, but he gets taken down by the selfless truck from Dongyan. The training back. Both teams suffering a loss as far as the DPS is concerned. It seems like Lunatic Eye is still going to be struggling to try to get in onto the point. Miro with the Primal Rage trying to smack the members of Freak and Freaks off of this one, but still can't find much. And Lunatic Eye have to peel back. Yeah, frustrated again. Have to peel back, like you say, Shaw. Sure. Zumba able to just. Use the defense matrix. We're seeing the read dive via Donghyun. Uh, control the point. Daehyung takes out Arhan. That's a big pick. Yeah, they get rid of one, but they need much more than that if they're going to get this. You know, coming into the backside, throws out the pulse bomb. Can he find a kill? Not going to happen. As Jaehyung pushes forward, has the transcendence ticking up. Mono dropping down off the high ground, tries to get the kill, but can't find it. He gets taken out by Guido. Does help find that double kill. They pop Donghyun out of that mech with the pulse bomb. Now Barrier now out here yet again from Freaking Freaks Blue. Self-destruct from Zumba, not going to claim any lives. And that Recry has taken high ground. the high ground. That's been Lunatic High's high ground for the rest of the map. That's why you see Winston jump up, but not going to be able to deny it. Recry just free hitting as the EMP, has the attack visor available as well, but doesn't even need it. Yeah, and yet again, this is going to be not even a single tick coming through for Lunatic High. And things are starting to look a bit dire. Two minutes, 20 on the clock. This has been run down, and even if they do get that cap, Freak of Freaks Blue have so much more time to work with. A yeah, really good situational awareness coming through Ooh, on the side cool. of Recry. Taking the high ground here on defense for the first time in, what, three or four minutes of attack. Wasn't able to see an adjustment from Lunatic High, but we do see an adjustment in terms of hero choice. Zumba just going to be jumping onto the Roadhog. So a devilous comp on attack this time, looking for a single pick. And to reset from there, pick onto Recry will be massive. Needs a light and something here. We get rid of Lucid before Poking he around. Hits First hook goes wide. Now right in between all three of them. Doesn't find anything, but IDK does go down. Guido finding that one with the pulse bomb. Not firing away, looking to get rid of Dong. He'll knock him out of that back. Han dies mid. Yet. Oh! Get taken down. Does not have that Dragon Blade available now. Christ still operating in the back of the point. Has that attack visor ready to go, and he will pop this one out. Shooting in on Demiro, who goes low. Will get popped back up. Prince it's coming through on both sides. Just keeping everybody as topped off as humanly possible. In onto the point. Those Lunatic High have that first tick coming through for themselves. They need more than that. They need the cap desperately in time. The kills are starting to pour through for them. Miro finishing off IDK. Respawns coming through for a freaking spook. Can they get onto the point in time? It's going to be the question. And the answer is no. The boop at the last second from Toby. Stopping them from making their way in. They do get the cap. There's so little time in the bank. And a big clutch play was Zumba hitting the hook and getting the one shot onto May before May could use the ice wall or the ice yeah. barrier. So no value out of the last second delay tactic coming through from Arhan means that the full capture does come through in that particular instance. Like you say, very big difference in the time banks. So Lunatic Kai going to have to have a pretty heroic first push. It will be in action next, but a really big time bank advantage for the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. See what Lunatic Eye can piece together. Seems like we're probably just going to see the same comp that we saw from them on that first push. Did cap it very swiftly. And Afrika Blue aren't changing anything up either. So we'll just be going ahead meeting it just like we saw a few minutes ago. And the big adjustment was the triple DPS on attack that we saw Afrika Freaks Blue open, which they may still do when they're on attack next time out. I mean, they have plenty of time, so if the triple DPS doesn't work out for the first one or two pushes, they could just swap it over, depending on how far Lunatic High makes it on this attack. We've seen teams just go for very specific comps when they have a pretty low goal to achieve, like, for example, the Road High even opening on attack on Numbani when there's only one checkpoint, just getting displacement ultimates and brute forcing your way. So we'll see what Lunatic High can claim. Minute five to start things off. You know, checking things out, making sure there's nobody waiting in on the flanks. They can start pushing forward. No Torbjorn turret either. So yet again, going to be this right flank high ground push coming through from the side of Ludic High. And we're already for this one. They want to contest the sight lines and the safe positioning for 
the supports, but here's the dive. It's a hard dive. They're gonna get jumped on. Recry goes low, but gets healed right back up. Lucid, really the only member of Freaky Freak Split that's gonna fall. Arhan goes dangerously low, does get taken down by Zumba right at the last second, but the losses definitely many more of them on the side of Lunatic Eye. So they will go ahead and peel back, try to regroup. They have one more push and try to get something done. Need as much percentage as they can possibly get with 15 seconds left on the clock. Now pushing in. They'll start that cap coming through. Freak, Freak, Freak's Blue still playing off the point for the moment. Give up a single there. checkpoint at least. What is going on? Do they just get the second one? Honestly, right now, it looks like the answer's gonna be yes. Maybe they even just get the cap. Mono and Recry both go down. They do lose Miro, but IDK now taking out one of the supports. Gone down. They're just gonna get it. And yeah, the camera was focused on the DPS running onto point, but the tanks were really buying so much positioning onto the defense. It felt like the peel was there and they just never got on the point. I mean, can they just snowball? This is going to be the question. There's still a couple of people just now respawning. Lunakai pushing forward. Eska finds Mono. Can he get more Helix Rockets? Not going to connect, and you can see Dongyan pushing forward onto the point, trying to buy time for his squad. Arhan drawing out the Dragon Blade. Not going to find anything yet. Dashes through, trying to get the kill, but will not S3. find it. Toby takes him down. Tag Pfizer out from Eska. Gets rid of the baby diva. Looking for a bit more now. Recry yet again up onto the high ground, trying to poke back in for the barriers there to try to deny a lot. The sound barrier is out by Toby, buying so much time for himself to stay alive to get healed back up and for this point to keep ticking up for them. The contest is there from a Freaky Freaks Blue this time around. They have the Transcendence dropping in. So this might be the end of the line. I'm still juggling. Finally Good gets the kill on Eska. Yeah, takes it down. Arhan had to come in to help. Seems like this might be the end of it as Guido will fall. That will drop like a rock the overtime meter. But good lord, Ludovic High getting way more than you would have expected. Yeah, we had a real surreal view of that claim onto point A. Replay, please. Watching sedately as the DPS sat on the point while the tanks were contesting all the members of a Freak of Freaks Blue. And Lunatic Kai, really out of nowhere, picked up point A, couldn't get much onto point B. But they still do set a goal for the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. So very much going to be in the driver's seat with as big a time bank as they have. But Lunatic Eye always seems to find a way, and they're at least going to make this a contest. I really hope we have a replay of that from the tank perspective at the end. Regardless of who wins, because uh, some serious heroics from Mira and Zumba. Miro and Zumba, rather. Just keeping everybody, literally everybody on the side of Freak Freaks Blue occupied. But now, same hero choices for Freak Freaks Blue, who have been Pretty inflexible so far this series, and also this tournament, haven't needed to be. Hi, Lunatic High. We'll see. Predictably, Jay Hong sticking with the Ana on defense. Been no Ana from Lucid, but Jay Hong has always favored it on Hanamura Point A. They've tried a lot of heroes in this tournament, 20, compared to the 13 that we saw previously from a Freaking Freaks Blue. So they have tried things out, but three of those they played less than a minute during the regular tournament. So they hard to count. So they, they kind of they tap on it. They're like, okay, you know what, this is gonna work, and then they swap to something else. But 20 is still a pretty good number. And innovation on the side of Lunatic has mostly been from Jay Hong, whose one-offs have been largely big game changes. Arhan already getting jumped on. Does have that orb of harmony to get him back up? It seems like he'll make it up to full HP. The rest of the squad dropping back, but Recry is going to be the first one to fall. Zumba taking him out with a boo. Arhan, Sleep Dart comes through, but he's going to get woken up immediately. But Mono has gone down. Now Freaking Freaks Blue seems like they might just get delayed off this push. Zumba will be firing away where he can. He can jump off the map if necessary. Does he want to stay alive is the question and try to work his way back into the mech. It's a bit of a gamble. Freaking Freaks Blue will be stopped off for now, but there's four and a half minutes to go. So much chase down coming from Freak Freak Spoo with so few picks to open up. Bit of ult percentage. Zumba's sticking in. Zumba really wants to get his mech back. Doesn't want to jump off because he knows the moment. I mean, look at that. Look at all that meter he just got for himself. Nearly has it ready to go. Drop down coming through. Can he make it back in? The answer is going to be yes. Comes back, picks up the health pack. It's a nice little push through. You see Mono having to back off. Goes low. Has that healed an eye on him. And he will fall in the end. Two kills. Onto the members of Freaking Freaks Blues. Jay Hong not going to get taken out by that pulse bomb. No stick there. And Arhan pushing very deep into enemy territory. Seems like he, he knows that he's not going to be able to find a kill. He's going to get popped off the map. He will go down and Freaking Freaks, they get halted out yet again. They got Miro to use Ultima, but that was really the only big advantage that Freaking Freaks Blue could get. And that particular attack started with a much bigger time bank than they did starting up the map with five minutes. Freaking Freaks Blue, they have the Dragon Blade now. They have the Transcendence. They can open with that. 
And for now, Samba are not quite available for Lunzikar. Well, Bob coming through here, Guido, looking for that cheeky corner pick, but will not be able to find it. In the meantime, Arhan dashes through, takes out Jayhawk. Because yet again, playing very far forward by the look of things. Self-destruct tossed by Zumba. Does find the kill on Damano, and Lucid gets taken out. Maybe that's enough to go ahead and stomp out this push yet again. Arhan getting zapped to death. Will get killed right at the end. Eska takes him down as the soldier. And already halfway through the time bank, just about a Freak of Freaks Blue getting stopped at every twist and turn. And even with the investment of the Dragonblade and the Transcendence, sure, got a couple of stragglers, but no more on the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. Will not make any further adjustments. Looking to come in as Guido looking around the front, trying to get information about any swaps, none coming. Goes low, we'll get the top back up. Just trying to build up for another pulse bomb. Last one was a nice angle that he was trying to play, but didn't quite find that stick. It was rather cheeky. But for now, that's going to be the sound barrier coming down to the Freaks Blue pile in, looking for the cap. Finally, Recry chasing in, has the attack visor ready to go, but tries to get onto the support members, but cannot take them down. Mono will be able to get rid of Jayhong, but Arhan, Lucid, and IDK have now all fallen. Both supports getting taken out. Pulse Bomb in will knock Kitongi Hunt out of that mech. And Miro is just kind of boxed into a corner, smacking him around like the angry ape he is. Comes up with the kills. And now it's two minutes left on the clock. Lunatic Kai looking for match point, looking for the full hold. Yeah, Freaking Freaks would have been so tunneled on trying to take down the back line as the disengage from, loose, from the sides of Jay Hong and Toby was awesome. Couldn't find it. really any picks. And as they were diving, the back line was exposed. Their supports were taken out. And now we're getting into extra innings as well. Our heart opens up again. Yeah, has that Dragon Blade healed tonight coming through. Drops low 10 HP. And the boop is there from Toby to take him out. Jay Hong, the only one that's fallen. Eska will follow up, but it's three to two. See that leap in is uh, Romano. He's very deep into enemy territory at the moment. Guido going in with a recall, keeping himself topped off. Goes back over to the point where nobody is contesting at the moment. IDK trying to get out of there with his life. Seems like he's going to be able to do so. Well, these uh, this is pretty deep. Actually chasing in onto Jay Hong. Okay, he's just trying to he's just trying to proxy the spawning numbers of Lunatic Eye, which is not very many of them. Self-destruct out, not gonna find a kill. Transcendence coming through, gonna be matched by that sound barrier from Toby as Lunatikai tries to hold off at this one. 56 seconds remaining, Recry with attack visor goes forward, finds the enemy Lucio, looking for the Tracer, can't quite find her. Hero rejoining the fight, has to bounce back. Try to keep himself alive, will get taken out off screen by the Primal Rage from Mono, who's doing quite a bit of work for his squad. So it seems like the cap will finally come through for a Freak of Freaks Blue, but now it's just a minute and seven seconds left. They need 33%. And Mono was the hero. We saw the previous attempt with the soldier trying to rush and get the back line. That didn't work. Chasing Jay Hong to the ends of the earth, coming back in and cleaning up low health members. They have a pretty realistic objective. They have one push, basically, for oh. one check mod, and Guido goes down. Yeah, Recry finds the pick right off the bat, but he gets taken out as well. Miro just zapping him to death with the help of Toby. He was swapped over onto that Zenyatta, so operating with double range supports here. Want to be able to top up these tanks as they operate on the high ground contesting a Freak of Freaks. Now, Jay Hong has ult, so does Miro. The combo can hold the point for a really long time. Waiting for the contest from Arhan, who switched off to Genji onto the Tracer just earlier on the previous attack. Has the Pulse Bomb on the back line looking for either taking over the overtime or finding a support. He'd love Jay Hong. Well, that's going to be the Nano Boost already coming through here. Arhan going low, gets a big recall to keep himself alive. Stick not quite going to happen. You see, Eska is able to kite his way back. Primal Rage used out by Miro. Leaps back down to the low ground, trying to keep himself alive. Donghyun throwing in. That self-destruct gets the kill onto Jay Hong. Pops it right below his feet, but it's going to get knocked out of the mech right afterward. They need this first tick, but they're suffering heavy losses. They try to go ahead and take out the monkey. They will be able to do so. Mono going low. Arhan taken out as well. Major delay tactics have been used. They will go down and lunatic high. Close out Hanamura now at match point 3-0 over Afrika Freaks Blue so far. Pretty heroic hold, you'd have to say, with how big the time bank was on the side of Afrika Freaks Blue. Couldn't do it. Took so long on the first point. And now it means we're going to extra innings, Achilles. No team able to pick up a single capture point on the second point means, I'm pretty sure, it's a tiebreak time. Oh boy. Oh, rough stuff here from the side of the Freaking Freaks. Very heavily struggling. And Lunatic High are just looking absolutely unstoppable so far in this set.
Yeah, really trying to read what's going on here. This particular scenario, seeing what map we're going to jump onto for the draw, because it just couldn't get that first point on the capture. Yeah. They are told before what the tiebreak map will be. Yeah, you were correct. I'm getting ahead of myself, Bob. I'm just so excited that Lunatic High is going against the odds. That's why we don't allow solo casts. So, yeah, it's got to have oh, two pairs of eyes. God, God forbid if this was a, a solo cast, there'd be so many mistakes. So I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We do have the tiebreaker coming up. Best of one, random select. See what our map is going to be for that one as we get the guys into the lobby. Seems like things are ready to go. Can't quite spy it. I'm trying to look at their screens. I guess we're going to have to find out the old-fashioned way. Probably not going to be the side of Nepal that we saw in the first series. And so we're going to be jumping on Lee Jung Tao. It's Night right. Market, I believe. No, this will be Gardens. Ah, Gardens. My apologies. Not Garden. You sure it's yes. the S? Yes, the original is Why Gardens. Is there and a gardens and garden in a garden is in Oasis. Why is that Gardens and a Garden? I don't know. Ask Blizzard. That's true. Okay, I'll let them know. I'll just send an email. Just tweet it. Blizzard Jeff. at blizzard.com. Tweet it, Jeff Kaplan. He'll put it in the next developer update. And then Dino Flask will remix it and make it hilarious. Oh, I'm Takai getting to play tiebreaker on control after they already won control point. Probably going to be plenty of wind in their sails. Freak of Freaks Blue giving up 99% in the first control point and then 81. As you know, it was pretty one-sided stuff for the side of Lunatic High. And what's opening here? So far, no surprises. Arhan will not be jumping on Genji predictably. A lot of pharmacy usually on gardens. So far, no sightings. I mean, neither of these squads really play Eska Vera in previous at all. seasons, but not this season. I mean, a Freaker Freaks Blue have not played it at all, but Eska, speaking of which, will find the first kills. He opens up on the recry, finds the Helix Rockets, and Lucid's going to go down as well. Guido doing so much work for Lunatic High throughout the duration of this series so far, and it's not stopping yet. IDK going to go down. Jay Hong. Firing away, just throwing his balls at people, and it's working out well. Yeah, able to push up so assertively. Able now drop back onto the point. Basically a perfect ace coming over. Side of Freaka, so side of Lunatic High. Now they have control very hard to find different positions here to attack onto the point. You can see already frustrated. They're going to float in from the backside, I believe. They also have another particular engage. Mira jumps oh, in. Mono just goes down. Mira says, I saw your interview, and you need to shut up right now, Mono. Stomps his way in, takes him out, and Keto yet again finds a kill, getting rid of Lucid. Will go down at the end as Recry fires away, but that's about the best thing that's happening for Afrika Freaks Blue. And yeah, Lutzkai able to push up afterwards, get exit frags, and now reset. Already 33% loaded on. They'll have double support ultimates in just a second. Freak of Freaks Blue, they tick up onto the TAC visor. Really only thing to their name. Lutzkai in such a strong point. And after a five-minute hold, crazily, they might be going up 3-0. Looking that way at the moment. Eska getting jumped off at the Transcendence is there to keep it topped up. Recry in the meantime does find the TAC visor kill on Kido, but yet again, Mono will go down the first member of Free Freaks Blue to fall for another time. And Eska just Red coming ball. up so huge, looking for a bit more. Won't quite get the killing. Blows on to Dongyan. But still, the team kill completed here. Freak of Freaks Blue struggling so much to try to get onto this point. And now they have no ultimates. IDK close to that self to that sound barrier and the self-destruct nearly there from Dongyan. But is that enough to really get them in here? 75% already for Lunatic High. They also have two zone control ultimates. Primal Rage still up from here. Hasn't needed it this whole time. Arhan poking around the backside does get the pulse bomb. Needs to be a big one. Got this one ready to go. And you see Miro going low. Does get jumped on. Gets that health back. Leaps over the building to keep himself alive with the Primal Rage. Perfectly timed out for himself. Gets himself into the point as well. Toby will fall as Arhan takes him out with the pulse bomb. Can't find a multi-target kill. But they still have not gotten the cap. And it's about to be into overtime. Mr. Kai could go ahead and surrender this, but seems like they might want to try to contest this one. They do we'll drop off it. Right Didn't they both need to go for the hard contest? Because you can see they're very close to a big war chest of ultimates. So smart just to back away. Lucid didn't have to use his transcendence. He actually died too early to use it. Probably would have used it in their attempt at picking up the point. So that's at least a support ultimate available. The side of a freak of freaks below. I guess all you know, Eska just has to swap over to Sombra real quick to get rid of the transcendence as well. Pulse bomb comes through, not gonna find the kill transcendence. That's false used transcendence. By Lucid. Okay, that's just as good, but this time it's Guido forcing that one out. Dashing around has to use the recall. We see Jay Hong using his transcendence just a bit off screen. Recry does have that attack visor pulled out, but everybody piling in 
behind that pillar will keep themselves safe. Eska firing back with his own, gets rid of our on the boop, taking Duncan out of the mech. He'll go down as Miro finds the kill. Jayhong does die, but Toby still very healthy, has that sound barrier now expiring as they try to push back in. The self-destruction Zumba not going to come up with anything. And actually, it's going to be the firing back coming through from the Freaker Freaks Blue. Not Free able to gets quite right kill off Mono. He gets away. Recry getting tracked down. He dies. Yeah, I'm getting ready to come through. Nearly 50% onto that one. Pulse Bomb down on the Miro. Chunks him out quite a bit, but he doesn't die yet. You know, will fall. And for now, Freaker Freaks Blue still do have control over the point, but Miro is trying to delay and get in here as much as possible. Get rid of Dong Hyun. We'll pop him out of the mech. He should go down. Can they get the cap is going to be the question. Starting to roll through. Gets delayed out as Mono leaps in right at the last second. Barrier down. Trying to buy desperate time for his squad. Sound barrier thrown in by IDK. Continuing to buy close. time. No further kills going they got down. it. They do finally get it. Jaehyun gets it. Pick onto Lucid as well. For a bit more of the delay tactics yet again coming through here for Afrika as Mono goes in. The barrier buying so much time for himself, but he needs some heals desperately. Defense Matrix helps keep him up for a little while. The firing away just flicks over to the side, finds Arhan. Self destruct thrown out by Dong Hyun. Mono yet again joining into the fight. Freaker Freaks Blue might be able to make this one work, but Dong Yun needs to stay alive. Able to kite in and out, even with the lack of heals. Jay Hong's back in as well. Attack Eska. Eska turns to the side yet again, finds Lucid, gets rid of Recry. Transcendence is here. Dong Yun's gonna get popped out again. Will go down, it. and overtime drops. And now, Lunatic Kai, I can say it this time, are at match point 3 0 over top of a Freak of Freaks Blue. And they're looking to just go ahead and close this one out right into the finals of a 4 0 victory over the undefeated team all throughout the round of 16 into the round of eight. And they're so close now, they can taste it. The ability to delay out for five minutes of time bank and not even allow a single tick onto point B felt like a victory for the side of Lunatic High, confirmed as a victory onto the control point. And now, well, we talked about, hey, today we have one guarantee. We get to see a Freak of Freaks Blue play Escort. They play Escort, backs against the wall, and Escort, for the first time, might also be the high and buy for the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. You can expect the Freak of Freaks have been practicing Escort in the background, despite the fact that they have not had to play it. But this could certainly be a weakness for them. Ludotikai haven't played it too much themselves, but have had it more recently compared to a Freak of Freaks Blue. And now, with their backs against the wall, match point for Lunatic High, we will have that tactical pause called. Well, this may be a very important tactical pause here. This coach has not needed, on the uh, stage at least, to have to be involved in these sort of scenarios because it's always been the team against Afrika Freaks Blue causing the t calling the tact pauses. They have been so comfortable in their run to the semi-final. Too comfortable, perhaps, people will say, the 15 and 0 will become a relic of the past if they go out in straight sets against Lunatic High. And now they have that interesting question of where to jump on, because if you ask me about Escort, Dorado has been the auto choice for most teams. I mean, speaking of interesting questions, mine is, we know what happens for a Freaker Freaks Blue when they win. They get to go to, you know, beef barbecue, pork barbecue. They get to eat meat instead of having to eat vegetables. What happens if they lose? Do they get punished? There's no more games. Do they just not get to go to barbecue until season four of Apex? Scary thing is they probably haven't been thinking about that too much. They've been rewarded time and time again. The sort of questions that would be there for other teams have never been raised for the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. So very difficult to see where they're at because it's one of those things when you're on a win streak, it papers over the cracks, right? Everything feels good. Any sort of disagreements you had with your teammates, none of that matters because you're winning. And when you're winning, you feel great. We didn't know what happened when they lost. And so far, the question has not necessarily been capitulation, but there's been these little mistakes that we haven't seen creeping up again and again from different players. Mano has not been better than Miro in this particular series. Their strategies and, for example, their ability to play the Genji. The Genji really has not achieved much for Arhan. He's been jumping on the Tracer more and more as we've gone on. It feels like a Freak of Freaks Blue for the first time in Apex Season 3 are conforming to what another team is doing. I mean, one of the things you really have to compliment today is Eska especially. Everybody, you know, Eska Lol, the big meme, he has been on form. This is the Eska that we saw the likes of in the Season 2 Grand Final when he had those those shining moments to help carry this squad to success. He and Guido have both been performing better than we've ever seen them 
in the last couple weeks. Started off today at a 1.08 1, uh, 1 KDA. I would love to see the numbers after this set if they close this out with a 4-0 because it has to surge forward. And the thing about Eska is that he's kind of had to be a Mr. Fix-It. When you ask about big Eska heroes, it's more been heroes he's been forced onto rather than heroes that really seem to fit him. Not a great Tracer player, I think it's fair to say. But at that, now they have Guido to jump on the Tracer. He had to be the Tracer to Who Are You because Who Are You was the Genji du jour. And thus, to me, he's more comfortable on the Soldier, certainly. And now we see him, just like Rascal, emulating as a DPS player jumping on the Sombra. His decision-making on the Sombra has been very, very good. Very often using the EMP, he doesn't need five members. If he's getting the D.Va and taking out and hacking the D.Va, stopping her from being a factor, that has been enough for Eska. And crucially, that has been enough for Lunatic High when it comes to picking up victory. So the tactical pause ends. First time on Escort. In this tournament, Lunatic High have played Escort four times. In six months of Apex action, there's only been five Escort maps for the side of a Freak of Freaks Blue. Famously none this season. We'll see where they go. One of the biggest victories, that historical moment for a Freak of Freaks Blue, was on Escort. It was famously on Gibraltar, where Arhan backdoored the pay the payload and was able to push it over. Jabot is the famous one, but Route 66 will be the decision. All right, well, we're just finding out more and more about a Freak of Freaks Blue's comfort map. So far, it hasn't really worked out for them, however, but Route 66, maybe this is the stage for some change. The start, perhaps, of the dreaded reverse sweep if you're a Lunatic High fan. Reverse very sweeping Lunatic High, hey? Very, I mean, not like that's never happened before, but uh, a very bold prediction. Indeed. Seems very unlikely with their backs against the wall. Visor glasses are off for recry. No time for posing now. This is where you earn your money. This is where your story may end. You're the Freak of Freaks Blue in Season 3, whereas Lunatic High, everything is working for them on this day. They have been smarter. They have been better. They have been tighter in their plan. The decision-making from behind is not the same for Freak of Freaks Blue. All right, well, let's see if they can get themselves together. That tactical pause, three minutes bought with their coach to try to get their mental state fixed, to try to get them focused in on this game to start climbing their way back into the series, to actually make it a series. Let's go ahead, load up for Route 66. Very big cheer coming out from the Lunatic High fans, as always, but especially so here today. Match point for them, potentially 4 owing a Freak of Freaks Blue. The team, like you said, going for the Michael Jordan record. And they are very, I mean, it's already been shattered, but even getting the win here is seeming like an impossibility. Yeah, they were reaching for the unfathomable, and now they're just trying to get a single game win in their grasp. They can't even be thinking about reverse sweeps so they get a win on Escort here on Route 66 and move from there. And what a change in fortune for Lunatic High. Two maps ago, two matches ago, they lost to Kongdu Panther in pretty one-sided fashion. Guido trying to play the Genji, doing his best Who Are You impression, found wanting. But the adjustments since, beating Conbox, not the most stiff opposition, but crucially, taking down Luxury Watch Blue. They could go 7-0 and and set a record of their own over Luxury Watch Blue into a Freak of Freaks Blue. Far. Looking really good for them. The Recry. Blue on the attack. Yeah, Recry going to be starting things off on McCree. This is the spot they got into. Onto Eichenwald at the end was running this McCree focus comp. It is with the Mercy, but not the Widowmaker being pocketed. It's going to be very much McCree being pocketed in this scenario. Let's go yet again here on the Sombra. Firing away, trying to get some damage in. He's build up too much as far as the ultimate is concerned. Has to snap back a bit early. Hero as well. Discord Orb's on him. He's going to fall. So overstepping a bit. Does get punished up for that one. So nice target selection coming through from the members of Freaky Freaks Blue. And so far, this payload's going to keep moving unhindered. Target selection and ultimate usage. Those are the two big things for Freaky Freaks Blue in their 15 no run. And in Season 1, honestly. And much better target selection there. Arhan in the back line takes out Eska. Not even 
making it a factor that the health pack had been hacked because they were mostly playing around the McCree instead of diving in and playing around that terrain. We cry staying at range. They continue to push and the payload now not being stopped. They all realize that nobody's on it. We have to drop down off that high ground. Keep things rolling in and look at the Kai. Waiting for that last second contest. We'll be pushing out. Nano boost in on Tamiro. Dives into the back line. Doesn't Game find anything though. Good disengage coming through from the Mercy and the McCree. Not wanting to get involved. Tamiro, no value out of the Nano boost, you'd have to say. Yeah, they just kite their way back safely. Donghyun does get popped into the mech. That's about the worst thing that's happened for Afrika so far. And now the Dead Eyes are available, for, available here for Recry. Flash bang nice. down, headshot lined up. Eska's gonna fall. And seems like it's just a matter of time here for Afrika Freaks yeah. to go ahead and finish this one out. Dead Eye now coming through Zimba. Defense Matrix ready to go. But we'll see that mech get popped as Arhan helps him out. We'll take him down in the end. And Recry follows up for another one, finds Guido. Recry clutching it in the back line. Multiple people, different people trying to dive him. Means that less people are contesting the payload, which was inching forward after kill after kill was registered by Recry. Not an Arhan focused comp this time. It's Recry the one who's drawing all the attention. You get the first checkpoint. They keep pushing. And still going to be sitting on the Sombra is Esker. Still trying to make this one work. He had 52% right now for the EMP, so he needs to build this one up very rapidly. Arhan will get jumped on, forced to go ahead and dash back. The recall still available, so he's still very safe to just keep fishing around, looking for a pulse bomb. We'll throw it in onto Miro. He's not going to get too much damage in. Back. This time, Recry. Chase he's down. Go very far forward, but the res used solely on Recry just because he's been so instrumental to the success of a Freak of Freaks move so far. Donghyun was in position with the defense matrix as he came out, so no potential for the assassination. So good read on the res there from IDK around the McCree, everything else was in order, and they still heavily went out on the fight. Yeah, they certainly do, and the payload is going to keep on moving nearly 50% of the way to point B. And it's been relatively uncontested this entire time. Eska still working on that EMP. Will just now be getting it left on. Look how far back he is. Pulse bomb coming through. Got it! Take him out, and Arhan says, ah, you know what, that's worth it. I mean, Eska was just desperately trying to find a way to spam up the EMP. He's been denied for so long. Hide off the, the payload here as ult is popped by Miro. Yeah, still has that Discord orb on him. Recry firing away, trying to snipe him out of the sky. Won't quite get the kill, but takes him dangerously low. Kido in the meantime, of course, to use that recall. Snaps his way back, pulse bomb ready. Drops it down, doesn't find the stick, doesn't find Triple. the kill. And it's going to be a massive explosion from Dongy and finds the double pop Zumba out of the mech. And Lunatic High are just getting slaughtered on Route 66. Dongy special is launching that. Uh, Self-destruct got two and the mech as well, so super big on that one as the defensive position. Great research, you'd have to think, from Tyrong and the troops. That's why Donghyun is so clutch on the use of those Diva ults. And nice KDA in the league coming into yep. this game. And that's a big reason why. Continue to inch forward, not on the standard, not on the sort of comps you to research from a Freak of Freaks Blue. Finally, they're showing us new tech. And so far, it's been very successful on Route 66. Yeah, for sure. Mono does die, a slight reprieve here for the side of Lunatic High. So it does buy them a little bit of time. Eska with the EMP ready to go. But finding an opening is going to be the challenging part. Freak of Freaks Blue just pulling back, paying, playing off that payload for now. There's Arhan. There's on a bit of a ninja mission, sneaking around the backside. Pulse Bomb's ready for a target. Pulse Gets Bomb it. comes out, finds the stick, but the Translocator actually takes him out to safety. Eska perfectly timed. Will keep himself alive. Guido finds a kill on the Reek right now. Arhan in a spot of bother. Will just get sprayed down. Eska with the MAC-10 comes up with the kill. And finally, Lunatakai in front of point C are finding some ground to stand on. And this is looking a bit reminiscent of Eichenwald. If they can pull off this hold. A bit early to claim that, but I understand what you're saying because now the ult banks are also in position. Eska still has the sound barrier. been so good at baiting out support ultimates. Only going to be Lucid, it's not available for now. The EMP, going to drop this one down, can't get that transcendence off because it's not there. 6% still away was Lucid. Zeska just sprays him down yet again. So to the pop out on Donghyun. And likely just leave him hanging out to dry, let him retreat as a baby diva, sacrifice whatever ulti charge he did have to swap back in and gain that back. What if Recry will keep sticking on the McCree? Very hard to kind of get the same sight lines he did when they were in a more open phase as they walk into this ending part of Route 66. Still trying to make it work though, barrier down now. 
Fleeter wants to stick with it for the flashbang once Eska shows up to try to lock him in. Self-destruct will be tossed out here by Zumba. So the majority of a freaking freaks back around the corner for the moment as we see the transcendence is coming down. Zenyatta is just posturing forward in front of everybody's each other's faces. Christ still has that dead eye ready to go. Flashbang consumed up by the defense matrix. So, so Eska popped the EMP, but get no value out of it. Much for IDK. For now, he's hanging around the sides, trying to inch forward the payload. There's a lot of fighting's happening off screen. Yeah, primal rage was used there by Miro. Now smacking Recry back. Let's have the Pharah spamming up. It's the Pharah into the corner. And they do take down IDK in the end. Miro getting that lead kill, but the guy's still suffering heavy losses. But with that follow up there from Guido, this is by them some crucial time for the respawns. Yeah, Miro and Guido getting a lot of work done in the back lines as Lucid able to take out the Diva. So it's moving right now. Right, it's moving forward, inching forward. Even though the back line was occupied for a while, on the payload they were strong. How long is going to keep moving? Still no contest coming through. From the side of Lunatic Guy, have to get on top of this one. There's still a minute remaining for Freaky Freaks Blue to complete this push. Has to go slow, gets himself out to safety, and does have that EMP ready. This could be the one that holds the push yet again. Pushing forward, will drop it down, looking for the kill in on Elusive, does find it as Arhan falls as well. Dong Hyun gonna get popped out of that mech. Should be taken down, they'll leave him alive for a while just to try to get that stagger. And now Recry is gonna be in the same boat, gets taken out. 38 seconds. One more realistic push here for the side of Freak of Freaks Blue. Love the communication coming through from Lunatic High. Ensured that the D.Va was in the EMP, but then turned onto and got the Zenyatta. With the left clicks, oh, hits oh, the pulse bomb, bomb down. Recry will die. IDK does have the res, but doesn't want to use it. Wants to save it for the final fight. That's going to buy so much time here. They're going to have to wait this one out, and it's 12 seconds remaining. IDK bringing back Recry on the McCree. As you say, Kept it for the last second engagement. Guido's not done. He's trying to harass Backline as much as possible. He wants to kill IDK. He needs to get rid of that Mercy so if she doesn't have that game-changing res. Eska has died. Let's Lucid finds the kill, stopping out what would have been an EMP coming up. He's at 73%. Self-destruct thrown out here by Dong Hyun. Zumba has his ready to go. Hasn't thrown it yet. Payload creeping forward, and Miro goes down. Lucid yet again, finding the kills. Transcendence forced out here by Jay Hong as he pushes in, just contesting this payload as we're now into overtime. Freaky Freaks Blue, no more ultimates other than that res, but nobody's gone down yet. Self-destruct thrown out. Could this be the moment? Finds Double! two. Recry and Mono both die. The res immediately comes out here from IDK, popping them back in. They have to get back onto the payload and keep this in contest. Great firing away, trying to get in on the Miro, but he's got that Primal Rage ticking in out. Eska charging in, has the Translocator set, has the EMP ready to drop, will throw it in. Lucid dies, Recry goes down, Dogian, IDK, all dropping like flies, as does that overtime meter. And the hold right in front of point C comes through for Lunatic High, but now they basically have to go the distance to close this out to win 4-0 and advance to the Grand Final. Seems like you were the prophet there, Achilles. You likened it to Eichenwald, and I wasn't a believer when they first entered that last garage phase, but able to buy a lot of time. Requi sticking on the McCree. IDK with a big res when he pulled it off. Inching forward, the EMP still being left available. Great use of their ultimates there, and that was the thing we complimented a Freak of Freaks Blue on so much. The very effective and also judicious use of ultimates. That's been a Lunatic High special for just two matches, and already coming trumps in this game as well. Now still, like you say, have to basically full push the cart. No trivial task. But Lunatic High, they're feeling it, Achilles. They think this is their time. Get the park it right in front of that ladder. That just seems like a bit of an occupational self, uh, safety hazard, this ladder. Osha would not be happy. So on the defense here for a Freak of Freaks Blue. It's not going to be the Genji. Largely been looked over by Arhan. A lot less game time on the Genji than his traditional. 68% Genji in his last series. About his season markers. Seems like a Freak of Freaks Blue are not the, the next in the list of teams that have had to... Coo to Conform to the no Genji meta. Yet again, just gonna be standard. No funny business on these defense plays. No sign of the triple support. A bit intriguing. That's you would support. have to say. On Route 66, obviously a little bit more risky than That's Hollywood, true. where it was perhaps most famous, and Hanamura Attack if you're Kondu Panthera for some reason. Uh oh. 
Well, it's before the action rolled, at least. We're going to have a pause. That's true. Always, uh, always a bad time when it's in the middle of a team fight. But it seems like Guido may be having some trouble, perhaps with his mouse as he jiggles it around. I believe I have diagnosed the problem. Look at you. Calling the icon vault, calling the mouse issues, perhaps. Still haven't gotten confirmation on that. There we go. You know, if this shot casting thing doesn't work out, you could diagnose PC problems. You know, I had to I had to make up for it. I had that missed call on the tiebreaker on Hanamura, so it was, you know. Well, you are the first person to ever make a missed call in an Overwatch series, so it's a uh, low light for you, Achilles. <laughs> Gonna have to live with that one forever. I know, right? I've never made a mistake, no so I've got that going for I'm me. the only person that's ever made first a mistake. Time. First time, Achilles. And it was bound to happen. It just happened to me. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, I mostly right. said it with a straight face. Yeah, mostly. The audience couldn't see. So you diagnosed the issue, but we need to together diagnose what the hell the story is with the Freak of Freaks Blue. Because, you know, they were bigged up. 15-0 and 0 coming in. 15-3 and 3 now after going down 0-3. And it really does feel like a combination of factors. You know, definitely we can start talking about the SOT schedule. Runaway, X6 twice, Kongdu Uncia, and... Meta Athena, who really were struggling this season compared to their heroics of Season 2. Not the strongest opposition. As Lunatic High would double the time on stage. 5 hours, 20 minutes compared to just the 2 hour, 40 minute time bank of Freak of Freaks Blue to make the semi-final. Got to play basically every contender outside of Team Envious in their run into this situation. And Lunatic High also... It's mostly been about the last two matches, right? They've really accustomed themselves to Guido in their matches over Combox Spirit and then Luxury Watch Blue, playing this front-to-back strategy where they've been targeting down Divas. Eska basically uses EMP on Soul Diva if that needs to be the way. If he gets more, he's happy. And that sort of target selection and really the trivialization of, say, the Genji strategy that dominated things for, Lu for Lunatic High in the Who Are You days, Arhan has largely been playing Genji this season, but now, against an organized team, in this slightly new meta where Genji's been trivialized, it doesn't feel like a Freak of Freaks Blue have been able to adapt, something they've really never been asked to do so far in Season 3. Well, this has to be an extra tilter here, mouse issue, long pause, staying focused in these sort of situations can be rather difficult, especially when you might be knocked out of the tournament, be denied your grand final appearance if Lunatic High can complete this map. Seems like we might have everything taken care of here for Guido. Certainly needs that mouse to play because he has been performing today. The Tracer certainly fits him very much better than the Genji did. And yep, 2.2 second time bank. We'll tick down. This could be the attack that cements Lunatic High into the grand final. I like how everything's in time bank. That's true. Time banks upon time banks in Overwatch. Here we go, Eska yet again just sticking with the Sombra. It's been so very kind to him so far. We'll get the hack in onto this nice, juicy health pack. Start opening up in on the Arhan. Has to snap back. Gets himself healed up, however. Does mean the contest around Big Earl is going to be more options for Lunatic High to be able to dart in and get the hacked health pack. Hey, they just duck inside. Get topped up. If they get chased on, has that faster re reload time as well. In a good spot. Miro going forward, drops down the bubble. Trying to contest that high ground a little bit. Gets quite a bit of damage on the recry. Meanwhile, Eska does find Arhan trying to take out that Sombra so she couldn't build up the EMP, but he just pays for that one. Yeah, Arhan farmed the pulse bomb on the front lines, but Eska with Winston, Miro being able to jump in and use that health pack we mentioned. Already has access to the EMP. So far, been very clean push here aside of Lunatic High. Like we're going to see a similar play here for a freaking freaks like we saw from Lunatic High that last second contest. As it gets ready to push forward, Arhan does find the Pulse Bomb in on the Jaehong, takes him down. Good opening here for the squad, but losing Mono, and now Arhan going down right off the back side of that one is going to be pretty crippling. They pop Dungan out of the mech, he's going to fall, and it is just a slaughter for Lunatic High. Haven't gotten the payload moved up into point A quite yet, but it seems like it's just a matter of time. Lucid dangerously low, will get taken out. Eska comes up with yet another kill. The stomp out from Miro just leaping in on top of Recry will kill him. Overall, a team kill just extended across a few respawns will give them that cap. Yeah, even got the hack onto Recry when he had Tac Pfizer available, wasn't able to use it. And like you say, they roll through point A. The Sombra ultimate ended up being more consequential than just having a 6v6 after Jaehong was the first person to go down. Already up and basically has EMP again, does Eska. 
who are ongoing dangerously low. Those headshots from Dito doing quite a bit of work, and Recry has died. Nero taking him out up onto the high ground goes Mono, but it's not enough for him to escape. Jaehong has the snipes coming through, takes him down, and now Donghyun, yet again exposed, will be killed. And this payload is just okay. pushing forward at rapid pace, nearing point B. Still four minutes on the clock. Africa Blue just does not see, know how to read this attack Sombra. They've been frustrated now on multiple maps trying to deal with it. They go for the dive, which is what Lunzikai baited Luxury Watch Blue into doing as they take down tanks in the front line. Taking a front lines, Eskin looking for that EMP. Hasn't needed it just yet. Payload almost at point C. Yeah, there's going to be the sound barrier coming down on top of the EMP. Does drop that one out. This cool door. has got the payload through. And they're just going to go ahead and push this one yet again. It just takes its way in. I can balled all over again, Papa Smithy. It does seem to be the tilter here for Freaking Freaks Blue. IDK going down. Dongyan out of the mech yet again as Zumba just fires away. I think the Freaking Freaks Blue are broken, Achilles. It is uh, really looking that way. And if they lost to a lesser team, you know, to the likes of X6, and you say, perhaps it's complacency. They went all the way through, not losing. But you do not underestimate Lunatic High, especially not with their resurgence in performance. But it seems like a freak of freaks just aren't showing up on the day. Arhan does take down Guido, dashing forward, tries to find Jaehong. Wraps around the corner, can't quite get him, however. They will get a hold onto the payload as it rounds that near final corner. Finally in the back here. lines, just trying to harass up. We'll have EMP soon. It's, well, Hat's health pack is lovely to play around, as we can see. It does wonders for you. Continue you know, inching forward. forward. Self-destruct does come through. Can they get out of the way? The answer's going to be no. Eska does go down. Guido will fall as well as Mono finds the kill, but Jae Hung takes out Dong before he can make it back into the mech. Self-destruct now thrown out by Zumba. Zones them back. Let's Lutic High push back in onto the payload. Gain some ground. Yes. Again, they don't have to go very far. Less than 20 more meters. Lucid pushing forward with that transcendence, trying to keep his team topped off. It's going to be the sound barrier to answer from Ludovic High. Just trying to stay in, trying to keep this competitive. Even from Miro, has that Discord door on him, and now it's going to be Tag Visor out from Recry. Miro dodging back into the bubble, keeps himself alive for the moment, but Zumba cannot say the same. Gets taken down after knock, being knocked out of the mech. And it Mirror. seems like Afrika will regain control yet again. Yeah, Miro this time diving in with the Discord album and even through Primal Rage taken out as the trades go in the way of Eska with the health back once again being the biggest factor. Surprising to see Arhan not visiting the Sombra at all really in this series. No, I haven't seen it touched really at all. Freaka Freaks Blue don't have a main Sombra or a main Tracer and while the Trace has been shared around, the Sombra has gone missing. Good. Yet again, falling low. Can he get the health pack in time? This yes. time, the answer is going to be no. Arhan is there to follow up. Takes him out with a melee hit. They're buying crucial time off this time bank right in front of that final push spot. 16 meters is all that's needed at the moment by Lunatic High. No ultimates available for them. Just the pulse bomb on the side of a freak of freaks. Each keep playing as wide as possible. They want to deny a big EMP here. That's been one of the biggest factors for Lunatic High in these pushes. And Definitely different sight lines available on defense, right on point C. But now, no grouping. False bomb coming up from Arhan, not going to find any targets. So a bit of a waste on that one, a recry is going to go down. Jay Hong finding the kill, Arhan goes low, EMP now dropped out here by Eska. Can they follow up with the kills? It's going to be the question, because they have not found it on the loose end of the pulse bomb. Will not stick. You know, firing away from the high ground, not really going to be able to find any kills. Has to come back in, join in with the rest of the squad. Now pushing forward, they That's find Yusano. Well. Could that be it? The payload moving forward. 14 more meters to go. Can they just close it out right here? Moving forward unhindered. Is I that just going to be it? It seems like they have. Last second contest. Dies! Nice. IDK dies in the middle of the sound barrier drop. We'll just get taken out in mid-air. Everybody pushing forward. Just getting picked off one after the other. Self-destruct will come through. Lucid boop back. Buying time with the trans but is it going to be enough? Doesn't seem like it. Point seven one meters left to go. Everybody going down. Sound barrier now making it in as IDK pushes forward. But they're all just getting picked off. Point two left to go. Dongyan knocked out of the mech. Will be taken down. Mono trying to rejoin the team. They need to stay on top. But Eska has the EMP yet again. They're all going down. And that's going to be it. Lunatic High close it out over a freak of freaks. Blue 4 0. And they are yet again two seasons in a row going to the grand final. Complete insanity, Achilles. They could do it in this manner. 4-0 was not a prediction anyone would have made if it was to be Lunatic High going to back-to-back -to -back finals. But they had a read on the meta that a Freak of Freaks Blue were never challenged to put together. We asked if gods could bleed.
Turns out the gods are lunatic high, returning to the grand final. And a Freak of Freaks Blue, their 15 game win streak, counts for nothing. The crowd goes mental, predictably. One eyed lunatic high fans is always the way. And they can cheer because their team on the day just out for a Freak of Freaks Blue. Out out thought them and out fought them. That's awkward to say. But in both ways, the Sombra play from Eska, I think, was one of the big stories. And in the early maps, it was all about Miro. Mad after not being in that Korean World Cup squad, outclassing Mano on the Winston. Mano said, you know, he was doing the smack talk. He said, I don't know about his Winston. Well, guess what? The Winston was never in doubt about Miro. And it was a virtuoso performance from him. I mean, it's a bit difficult to even really call this a fight. So one-sided by Lunatic High. Some sh signs of life from a Freak of Freaks Blue on the attack on Eichenwald, on the attack on Route 66. Hanamura, their last ditch hope really to try to turn things around. Had that massive time bank, got drained out by Lunatic High, but otherwise completely destroyed. The stats all were there for a Freak of Freaks Blue, but we forget one stat, which now is kind of poignant. Freak of Freaks Blue have played two best of sevens in Apex history. They have won zero games, went down 4-0 to Envious in the grand final of season one. <laughs> See, stats can tell a story. That is, uh... I found this one around the corner, and this one, unfortunately, a Freak of Freaks Blue, for all their development, really feels like their ease of schedule may have got them to the semis, but not cemented them in the semis. That was the thing for them, as they seem underprepared, which is a crazy thing to say this deep in a tournament. I'm so glad you brought that up, because that is hilariously true and somewhat depressing if you were the Freak of Freaks Blue fan. But Lunatic High, biggest fan base here in Korea for sure.